Mark, you're over at the KFW Development Finance Forum in Frankfurt right now. Where do you see the main challenge for development finance in the area of rural development right now? What we really need is more and better investment in smallholder agriculture. 75% of the world's poor are rural. Most are engaged in farming. It's one of the tragic ironies of the world we live in that most hungry people are actually members of farm families. So if we want to eliminate poverty and hunger and boost the shared prosperity for the bottom 40%, we really need more and better investment in agriculture in general and in smallholder agriculture in particular. What should be the main drivers of those investments? Especially if you consider that you can't really tell people where and how to invest their money. Well, um, I'd start with the farmers themselves, with the communities themselves. Uh, uh, there's an old saying, there are no dumb farmers because they died out generations ago. Um, so one approach to investing in agriculture and rural development is community-driven development where you actually work through the communities. Now that's at a very, very basic level, so what happens on the farm um, one of the best approaches is, is using community-driven development. Now, where do the technologies come from? So at the same time we're working at a farm level, we also need more and better investment in basic agriculture research, especially for crops and cropping systems of greatest interest to poor farmers in poor countries. So organizations like the Consultative Group on International Agricultural Research, the CGIAR, the National Agricultural Research Systems, bringing private companies more into investing in agricultural research that would benefit poor farmers in poor countries. So it is a continuum, all the way from basic research, what kind of seeds should be planted in the future, especially in the context of climate change, to what happens uh, directly on the farmer's field. I've heard you saying somewhere that the KFWs and the World Banks are only just small fish in a huge pond of investments. Though in the development cooperation, they have quite some gravity and their portfolios are important because what they show off to other investors. What would you say could be done to improve their portfolios? Actually shifting the portfolio of an organization like the World Bank more toward those activities that have the biggest bang for the buck uh, is a start and agricultural productivity, agricultural growth is one of those. So simply shifting the portfolio in favor of uh, agricultural growth is by itself a good thing. I mean one of the things that we know is that agricultural growth is one of the most effective ways for reducing poverty. Um, growth from agriculture has two to four times the poverty reducing impact than growth from non-agriculture for the poor segments of the economy. So simply shifting the portfolio uh, in favor of smallholder agriculture is by itself a good thing. Then within smallholder agriculture, emphasizing what works. Ag research systems, transferring the results of that research to the, to the farm. Um, more and better investments in women farmers. Another tragedy of the world we live in is we waste so much human potential. Uh, the estimates are if women simply had the same access to agricultural inputs and output markets that men have, agricultural production would go up 20% uh, in East Africa. I mean, 20%, that's huge, simply by giving women the same access. Um, security of land tenure making sure that smallholders, particularly women smallholders, have the same security of tenure has enormous potential for, for unlocking agricultural productivity. I mean, if you're a poor farmer, particularly if you're a poor woman farmer, and you're not secure uh, in, in your land, I mean, would you invest more? No, you probably wouldn't. So, so having security of land tenure for, for smallholders, particularly women smallholders, is then fundamental to greater agricultural productivity, reduced poverty, reduced hunger, greater economic growth. Do you think that development finance institutions will have a larger role in the future? And considering their strategic role, do you think that they should actually reconsider and become rather leaders for other investors to follow? Well, certainly the role is likely to uh, evolve. I think there will always be a role for investment uh, lending and uh, project, uh, specific project investments. 
um, trying out uh, new activities, new mechanisms, trying, you know, this country adopting a new technology or a new way of doing things from another country and uh, KFW, the World Bank, uh, EFAD, the, the, the other development banks have I think an important role in that. But I also think the role will evolve. I think that an organization like the World Bank should for example be doing more on global public goods. Um, activities that we need that cross national boundaries. I mean, a lot of attention to Ebola, say, earlier this year. Well, Ebola knows no boundaries. Uh, avian flu does not respect national boundaries. I mean, these are global public goods. Uh, what do we do about the world's oceans? I mean, a half billion poor people depend on healthy oceans for their livelihood. Um, the, the oceans, by definition, don't respect national boundaries. So an organization like the World Bank, I, I think, needs to do more on global public goods, as well as continuing to invest in projects at the national level. And nowhere is that more important than in climate change. I mean, climate change is perhaps the ultimate global public good that we have to address. And the ultimate challenge, I guess. One more question. This year, the World Bank published its WDR, the World Development Report on Behavior Economics. Apparently, it was the most widely read WDR so far. What is your department, the Agriculture and Rural Development Department, doing in terms of picking up those interesting ideas from the report and putting them into practice in terms of influencing people to motivate people beyond what we know as information transfer and education. One of the things I think I learned uh, many years ago is that when somebody is behaving irrationally or what appears to be acting irrationally, they're not. And, and so if a farmer is not adopting a, a technology, like why isn't uh, she using that seed? Why isn't he using that fertilizer application? Why isn't she growing this instead of that? Um, it's not because they're stupid. It's not because they're um, wrong-headed. It's often not even because they haven't been educated. There's something else going on where from their perspective they acti actually are acting quite rationally. And we as development practitioners often fail to understand why from their perspective they're acting rationally. And what, what we need to do instead of jumping to a conclusion that, well, it's obvious you should adopt the seed to grow this crop or have this kind of water management system. Um, if it's not being adopted, or even before we and our partners try to introduce new technology, try to understand better why from the perspective of a poor person who is acting in a way that doesn't appear economically logical, from their perspective it is economically logical, and that's part of what this WDR was, was all about. So I think it's highly relevant, especially uh, to those of us who work in a fundamentally risky area uh, like agriculture. Thank you very much. Thank you.